what I would like to ask you to begin with is just talk to me about the influence of Dado Light. How much of an influence has Dado Light had on the industry? Well, <laughs> I, I first became aware of, of Dado's equipment maybe uh, early 90s while I was at university uh, film school, USC. And at the time, there was no, no other lamp that was quite as punchy and specific. The, the, the focal spot was just off the charts, almost surgical on how precise uh, you could focus uh, the lights. Back then, as to now, uh, there's no other light quite like it that does what it does. What was the reaction? What did people have to say about this? Well, I, I, w I was certainly blown away. And uh, to jump ahead, I was lucky enough to do a, a couple projects with the director of photography, Conrad Hall. And he, with Tom Stern, his gaffer, liked to use almost every light at full spot. Again, I said surgical, and, and Connie, in his lighting technique, would be just points and slashes of light. And um, yes, you could put you know, peppers and some other lights at full spot, which, which we did to augment, but there was nothing that did quite what the, the dado light did. And um, for, for people that love very specific painterly light is just an incredible, incredible tool. And how difficult was it before that light came along to do that sort of thing? Was it possible if you took the time or was it really not able to be done? You, you could, you know, you could, to a certain degree, uh, you could you use a Leco to do some things that a Dado could do and, and then you could go full spot on some other lights and approach what a dado could do, but there was no single unit that could do what the dado light did, and, and not, neither of those units could do quite what it did as well on their own. So yeah, I, I found it to be very unique, as I still do. Over the years, the system has developed, and it's important to define that dado light is a system. It's not just one light, mm -hmm. even though the DLH4 might be the most well-known dado light. From what I understand, there's over 40 dado lights in the range, but even just looking at specific lights, it's the projector attachment, the imager, and you can do work with shutters on that, and then you can project gobos or patterns or even just a little bit of light onto an exact part of the scene. Right, like, like the, the DLH-4, I believe, you know, goes back to the early mid-90s, and then you come up to the, the newer DLED-7, takes all the exact same attachments that it, nothing's been made obsolete. It's a system that has worked, continues to work, and all the same pieces fit together. It's fantastic. Any thoughts on the development of the data system? Well, I would like to bring up the, the, the LED and the hybrid system. I, I was, oh, I guess this was maybe three years ago, I was working on a shoot where other than very large lights, like 20Ks and 10Ks, we were using LEDs for virtually everything except for dados. And, and I found myself having to gel, gel them. And, but I was, wasn't about to give up dados, because certainly in the LED world, there wasn't any LEDs all about soft. That's what everybody's doing. I still wanted to use hard light. So I stuck with the dados, used the gel. But it was, it was getting increasingly difficult to blend them into this LED heavy world. And I found myself one day saying the second dado makes a, like a bicolor led product i'm gonna run out and buy it i went home that night jumped online checked out the dado, dado's website sure enough they existed <laughs> i'd never heard of it and no one i knew had heard of it and i um immediately ordered myself a kit and it just works seamlessly with all the other led products and uh just an absolutely welcome tool and development. So would you say that every job you do, you have a set of dados with you? Absolutely. I, I've, I've been doing this full time professionally since I, I reckon 1995, well, 94 actually. And I, commercial feature TV, I can't think of a single job that we didn't have at least one dado kit, if not two or three. 
When it comes to the reputation of data light in the industry, among the people you work with, among the directors you work with, how is it regarded? What do people think when the name Dado is mentioned? Incredibly well built uh, and capable of doing what no other light can do and, and extraordinarily versatile. What would it be a world without these lights? And I'm sure you remember what it was like without them. So I know it's a hypothetical thing, but what, what, what would it change? What would the difference be if we didn't have these wonderful systems? Uh, I, th I think I well I think uh, light lighting would just continue to be sort of a soft wash with a little bit less personality um, and as I said previously I'm so happy we've gotten it, it it's, it's come into the LED world because for a while there there wasn't a single LED product that, that even approached anything that a dado could do um, you could approximate and try and get away with it in the pre-LED days, but now, now there's literally nothing else on the market that does what a Dado does. And are there any key moments that you can think of on some of the jobs where Dado has absolutely made the difference? Yes, I, I've been lucky enough to work on two films with the director of photography, Conrad Hall who was quite specific about his lighting. And I did, I did um, American Beauty with him and Road to Perdition. And I, it's hard to imagine a single setup that didn't use a dado, but certainly on American Beauty, there was a motif that in, in many scenes, there'd be a vase of roses or a single rose here and there. And after establishing a couple shots into making the movie, Anytime there was a rose, it would be specifically sort of half lit or backlit by a dado. It, it be, it, I was an electrician on that film, I wasn't the gaffer. It became my job to backlight every rose with a dado. And that, that tradition continued on into Road to Perdition. It wasn't roses, but it sort of blossomed into an icicle or a painting on a wall that would have the shutters cut perfectly just to make the painting pop a little bit. The, the, the tradition continued, Conrad would say, if there's a dado, bring Ross in to set it, which, which has sort of, that helped cement my love of dado, and uh, even though I'm now the gaffer, on my sets, I'm still basically the one setting the dado. <laughs> so I, I've just had such a, my whole career of setting dados that I'm still the one that does it, and I have you know, three to four electricians staring at me saying, we know how to do it. And it's like, yeah, but I'm, I've been doing it my whole life. So I'm very comfortable operating them. Fantastic. What, what will it take to really push data light forward in the USA? You can choose to use this or not, but this is my honest opinion. It might be helpful to you. <laughs> um, uh, I, unfortunately, the modern trend is to do very soft, very broad light, and I feel a, a, a motivating factor for that is that even though shows are considered to be single camera shows or features, they're often using two to three cameras. So, which pushes you into a corner. If you'd use hard light, it might look, make, look great on one or two cameras, but it could look horrible on a, the third camera. So, the, the direction now is to do very soft light and I have to say that a lot of directors of photography now are of an age that they uh, actually don't even remember or never knew how to use hard light effectively and um, it's just the, the, the trend of the industry I hope it comes back around I personally very lucky to have had a foot in hard light uh, working with Clint Eastwood for many years he still loves hard light um, but other companies like, like Aerie with their sky panels were, were sort of first to the forefront to build in this marketplace for soft light and again choose to use what you like but uh, I, don't know, I don't know that anyone's going to get ahead of Aerie when it comes to this soft light technology because they got into it first they may, they may or may well not have perfected it first but to me, the, the 
the data based on the old DL4 up to what we have now is, is just an, a, an incredible tool that I will never stop using. A lot of DATO products are actually incredibly well suited to EPK and, and, and smaller products, and, and I, I would always see them on music videos. Uh, and they're extremely well suited for that, but even on the biggest motion pictures, the Marvel movies, the, for the, the Star Trek series, all of those, you still... There's always a need, there's always a call for a product like this, and um, it's, it is an amazing line that, that, that it, it, th these tools work from everyone to just, you know, just an individual pulling up in a station wagon with a, with a dado kit, or me with, you know, a 48-footer full of every light imaginable. And there's always that same kit in there. It works, it works well for everybody. In short, I've been amazed with everything since the 90s, and I'm just really looking forward to what comes next. I'm sure it's going to be exciting. <laughs>